everyone, I'm Hillary with Dominion Tea, and today we're talking gunpowder tea. Yes, gunpowder tea. So this tea doesn't get a lot of love or attention anymore the way it used to, but it's absolutely worth your time if you haven't had it. So let's talk a little bit of history. So gunpowder tea, what is it? This comes out of the Tang Dynasty, so we're talking 600 to 900 CE, all right? So several hundred years ago. It is a hand-balled green tea. Think about this, they were balling them by hand. So these tiny little pellets got twisted, the tea leaves were dried, and then they'd be twisted by hand. Why in the world would they do that? Well, during the Tang Dynasty, the capital of the Chinese Empire was about eh, 1,400 kilometers from the coast where this was growing in the Zhejiang province of China. They had to transport it to the emperor. Not a real easy thing to do on horseback. So, convenience, right? Ball them up, they're kind of unique, interesting looking, um, and they can transport well, and you can get them over to the emperor. So why is it called gunpowder? Well, lo and behold, right? The Portuguese and the British show up on the Chinese shore, they take one look at it, and the little shiny green pellets look like gunpowder, because of course gunpowder was not machine manufactured in the 17 and 1800s, it was done by hand, so it had all sorts of interesting sizes wasn't standardized. So of course this tea looked like gunpowder and the name stuck. So what is gunpowder tea? So it is a green tea. It is baked. So it has a very dry grass hay finish to it. You're going to notice it brews a darker orange than most of the green teas coming out of China um, because of the baking process on it. There are several grades of gunpowder. There's even what's called um, a tribute grade. Uh, still made by hand. So keep in mind gunpowder is not made by hand anymore, right? So the balls are done with the machine now um, and the grade really boils down to the complexity of the flavor of the tea um, or if it is still done by hand. So this tribute tea is done by hand. Not a lot of it's made. Um, most of it is bought in country in China, getting it out of the country. It's just so expensive. Um, it's hard to do and you're not going to get a lot of quantity of it as an exporter. And so, what do you want to do with your gunpowder? Well, I would tell you, play with your brew temperatures. Gunpowder, I happen to like it down at about 165 degrees. You can absolutely go, quite frankly, as high as oolong at 195 with it because of how it's baked. It is a darker green. It has um, a really nice finish though, so don't write it off. A lot of people turn their nose up at it. I always like to remind Americans anyway, this is the tea that most likely got dumped in the bottom of Boston Harbor. Because at the time, the British East India Company would have been bringing in just shiploads of green tea into the colonies, and this would have been it. And so if you want a little bit of a history lesson and a little view into the past, pick up some gunpowder and enjoy it and just don't turn your nose up at the name um, or the fact that it's been around for a while and just happens to be a plain green tea. Give it a chance and of course keep exploring. If you enjoyed learning more about tea with us, hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we add more videos to our channel and check out the highlighted videos to learn even more about tea. And last but not least, you can check out all of the teas we talk about in our videos at dominiontea.com.